I think there are just a couple of principles that people apply regarding minimalism to their homes that can kind of translate right over to homeschooling. I've talked before about how I, I wish that I had started kind of along the, the trail of Charlotte Mason. We kind of dabble in a little bit of everything. We do some textbook, we do some um, you know, unit study type things. And we do some Charlotte Mason type stuff, but I love the Charlotte Mason method overall. And so one of the things that I know she talks a lot about is minimalism and how to incorporate minimalism into your homeschooling to make homeschooling more of a blessing instead of a burden um, for, for families who are home, because it can get really overwhelming. And yes. so we are going to talk about minimalism today. And I know that you are one who, who has really kind of studied up on this. So talk with us just for a minute about what that even looks like. Like, how can we apply minimalism to our families, um, you know, as homeschool families? Yeah. So, I mean, I think there are just a couple of principles that people apply regarding minimalism to their homes that can kind of translate right over to homeschooling. So you hear a lot about determining your priorities and what is important to you. So how can we apply that to homeschooling? I think that's the first step of minimalism to really have a successful application of that to your homeschool. And so yeah. just identifying your priorities. Um, for example, maybe you have extended family that speaks Spanish. And so a priority for you is to have a bilingual student at a young age so they can communicate well with their extended family. Well, then you know that that having that in your homeschool curriculum is a priority. Or maybe you added Latin into your homeschool because you were so impressed with a friend of yours who did Latin in elementary school. And it turns out your child really doesn't connect with Latin and it's really hard every day. And so maybe you reevaluate and say, you know, I added that in for this reason, but now I'm going to take it out. Mm -hmm. And so I think just looking at each subject that you have decided to include in your homeschool for your student, for each of your students and deciding what are your priorities for them, for you, for your family, um, and then which subjects really need to be the skill subjects, those independent subjects where they're doing it on their own, and which subjects can you do as a family? And that takes all of that extra time out of your day to differentiate. And so what can you do together as a family? Um, and so I would say that is the first step and then eliminating the clutter. And so eliminating the clutter in that you're going through each subject that you're having and, and doing that dividing out, but also eliminating clutter, things that are part of your curriculum that don't need to be there, that maybe mm -hmm. are busy work. And so looking at each workbook that you've included and, and asking, what is this accomplishing? Is this truly valuable? Can this be done in a different way? Because workbooks are really great tools for classroom teachers. But in most cases, at least in elementary school, it's there are other ways to um, identify how are they learning, what are they learning, do, are, do they have any gaps? And so, um, you know, swapping out workbooks for just a few minutes with your child, having them narrate in their own words, there are just there are just so many ways that you can eliminate busy work from your homeschool for the sake of your children and for you, and just for the sake of the opportunity, the way we have this this amazing opportunity to educate our children in an ideal way, since we have such a low ratio of, you know, teacher to student. I love that you're talking about eliminating busy work. And I think that's something that most homeschool moms deal with because especially new homeschool moms, they go into it thinking, okay, here's all the worksheets. Here you go, kid. And they sit them down and they're like, go do every single math yes. problem on this sheet yes. and, you know, or every single, you know, sentence, grammar, you know, sentence, like, I mean, and we just feel like if they don't finish it all, somehow they're doing it wrong, which means somehow we're doing it wrong. Um, and what it does is it just bogs them down and it bogs us down. Now, some kids enjoy worksheets and workbooks and things like that. Mm -hmm. My youngest daughter, she, there are some workbooks and worksheets that she, like, she does them for fun. It's kind of funny. Yes. Um, but not always is that necessary. And so I love that you're just kind of giving permission to say, you know what, it's okay to try to minimize, mi minimize, minimize, 
what word am I looking for? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll go with both of them. Um, <laughs> what it is that we're doing with our kids so that they don't get overwhelmed and bogged down with the busy work if that's not how they learn best. Homeschool Insights is sponsored by CTC Math. If you're looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com and try it for free. For more great homeschool inspiration and resources, listen to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 